Okay, action. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Adams, and I'm a dentist at Maryland Holistic Dentist in Burtonsville, Maryland. And today I'm gonna to talk about growth appliances. And generally I get a lot of questions about how do we get adult bone to start growing again? And how does it grow? And how do these appliances work? It's magic. And you know, we also do these appliances for kids and this video really is just generally about how the bone grows. You know, what's the voodoo and how does this stuff happen? So what I really want to do is just show you this, this skull and just talk a little bit about the theory. Um, as you can see, this is like the person's cranium and all these different colors here, different bones in the face. and. They literally, you can think of them as all little pieces that are fit together like a 3D jigsaw puzzle. And there are connections between, you know, like bone to bone and um, the way we actually get bone growth is we will stimulate um, by way of light pressures, um, the connections between bones and bones or teeth and bones. And the research shows that if you can apply a light constant stretch for a period of time that the bone will grow in the direction of the stretch. Um, that's really the basic idea. So if you have somebody that has like a narrow upper jaw, for example, um, and you wanted to get the jaw to grow wider, um, we would apply an appliance that would apply a light stretch for a period of time and the bone growth would occur where, where one bone meets the other one or where, a, where the teeth meet the bone. And we're actually talking about getting a volumetric increase of you know, the, the bone growth. And that's much different than orthodontics. Orthodontics is about moving teeth. So if you wanted to orthodontically move a tooth, you might, and, it, and, and orthodontic movement involves heavy pressure. So you would put a wire on a tooth, for example, or an Invisalign tray or whatever it is, and if you apply heavy force, you'll actually move the tooth through the bone. And there can be situations where, you know, orthodontic or an orthopedic movement may be the appropriate thing. If you have a tooth that's like rotated, you know, 90 degrees and you want to uncrook it, um, that is certainly a situation where orthodontics is going to be what you're, what you're going to want to do to, 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 to make that happen. Um, so, um, and, and, and we can make this happen in adults and kids. Adults um, is a little bit more complicated and takes more time because adults are not growing anymore. So we need to get appliances that will stimulate, um, you know, the bone to start growing again. Um, and with kids are already growing, they're growing faster and we just need to get appliances that will apply the light, stri the, 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 the light stretch in the direction that we want it to, 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 to grow. And since we're already developing, it's not nearly as difficult. Um, also with kids, they're normally not clenching and grinding and having a lot of TMJ symptoms and sleep apnea quite yet. So you're not battling against these other issues of inflammation and pain and swallowing. Normally the adults, you gotta get that sort of stuff calmed down. At the same time, you're trying to get this growth to get rid of the underlying causes of some of these problems. Um, but what I wanna talk about is differences in how you get the upper and lower jaws to grow. The upper jaw, since it's a block of bone, will grow widthwise and forward, it's just a matter of applying the stretch in, 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 the, in the right direction. Um, you know, the bone is, you know, much different shape than this lower jaw is like a horseshoe shape. The lower jaw, um, what you can do is you can put an appliance in here that will, you know, apply a pressure widthwise and the lower jaw will grow widthwise, but you're not really gonna be able to get any growth in this direction. That's just not the way this, this bone grows. So. People will say, well, how am I going to get my lower jaw, if my upper jaw is growing forward and wider, my lower jaw is going to be left behind, right? Well, wrong. Um, that's where what you do is you use an appliance that has a bite plane, this piece of plastic here. And when the person bites down, you shape this here so when they bite down, 
it fits where, where they're biting a little bit more forward, a little bit more back, you know, left and right. Um, and the research shows that if you can adjust this so that the jaw is biting in a more forward position, just a little bit more forward for a three month period, that there'll be a structural change to the TMJ and the way the lower jaw connects to the head. And that is how you get the lower jaw to, to, to grow forward. Um, so these are all the elements that we control when we're working with our patients to try to get their growth and development proper. What we're really doing is we're bringing them in initially and we're looking at the size and shapes of their mouths and their jaw structure and, and then we're designing appliances that will get the growth that they need. So hopefully this answers some of the questions you have about how we get um, the growth and development to happen. Uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about also is one of the most one of, one of the main benefits of getting this treatment to happen is to actually really two number one is to get the bite better balanced and more space in the mouth but the other one is to get a better get better nighttime breathing and a lot of times you can have people that have um, airway and mouth issues. And typically what we're trying to do it, when we do these growth and development appliances is we're trying to get their mouths to grow wider and more forward and taller um, to get more space in the jaw so the tongue can fit in the mouth. Because what, what a lot of times it'll cause a lot of clenching and sleep apnea is when you get into deep sleep, there's not enough room for the tongue to actually physically fit in the mouth and it's very close to the airway, which is right here, because the jaw hasn't grown out enough. And as soon as you get into deep sleep, the tongue relaxes, and it, since it doesn't fit in the mouth, it'll settle further back into the throat where it better fits, and then it gets in the way of like nighttime breathing. Um, so you can kind of begin to see how um, the strategy for designing these appliances and getting growth is tailored towards getting more room in the mouth so that the tongue actually can fit in the mouth. If they can actually fit in the mouth, it's more likely to actually stay in the mouth rather than get displaced back into the throat during sleep. And additionally, if you're growing the face more forward, then the tongue actually lives, because the tongue's actually in this space here. So if the lower jaw is living more forward, it's further away from the airway, and if your tongue does have a tendency to want to fall back, which it always does, it's not going to immediately get in the way of your breathing. Um, so, so there you have it. <laughs> you know, my name is Dr. Adams, and hopefully that answers some questions. Actually, you know what? I do have one other thing I want to say too. Is a lot of times when we're making these growth appliances, all the focus is on this turquoise bone, the maxilla. Um, and I want to stress that literally all these bones in the face have opportunity to grow. So with the maxilla is growing wider, this zygoma, which connects to here, is also going to grow wider. Um, so there's going to be some development here. Um, and super, super importantly, if you look at this red bone back here, that's the sphenoid. Um, if you can get some growth between the sphenoid bone and the maxilla, that's going to get all the facial structure really growing forward and that's really a big part of getting the tongue further out of, out, out of your throat so when you put these growth appliances in here that actually gives the tongue something to press on and a lot of times when we do these appliances we'll give tongue exercises which you know involve really trying to promote applying some pressure here and that improves the growth between the maxillae and the sphenoid bone. Um, you know, this is not voodoo and there's nothing magical about it. It's just a matter of designing appliances that will actually promote the growth the patient needs. And typically what we'll do is we'll have the adult patients come in every three months and I will check the bite on the appliances to make sure that the lower jaw is biting more forward in the correct position. I'll make sure that we're getting bone growth, um, make sure that the growth is happening per plan, make sure that 
patient feels comfortable and really just make sure everything's growing in the right direction. Again, my name is Dr. Adams from Maryland Holistic Dentist. Hopefully I've answered some of your questions. Thanks.